done. Huh? My name is Nostalgia Critic. I made a wrong turn somewhere because I'm face to face with a mysterious glowing building. I hold my ancient ninja weapon, a gun, in relaxed ready position. I'm shocked to discover my closest of friends, yet greatest of enemies. Black Nerd, stop! What's going on here? I'm finally doing it. I'm making an authentic Ninja Turtles movie. What? How? I'm putting in everything that's been missing. Krang is one of the villains, his giant robotic body, a technodrome with an incredibly pointless eye on top. <laughs> it sounds plausible, downright perfect, yet something seems off. Tasty, isn't it? Mmm, <laughs> yummy. <laughs> Well, if it isn't my old friend. Really? You're, you're playing Casey Jones? Well, what? He's a whiny, good-looking complainer with a clean haircut, right? No, that's not what Casey's like at all! Bebop and Rocksteady instead of Token Razar. A black Baxter Stockman like from the original comic soul. This is gonna be good! It should work. It should be amazing. Oh so God. why is something telling me it's all gonna go Man, wrong? I can't wait to see Krang in this movie. I've been waiting years to see him. Excuse me, do you mind? You're interrupting my word boxes. Oh, don't you talk about my word boxes! I like word boxes! Help me out here, would you? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm totally invested. Tamara? You've filmed with us before. How come you seem so disinterested this time around? Oh, I'm really interested. My mini skirt got like two inches shorter from panicking. A turtle van that shoots manhole covers. They can sell it in stores. Turtle gadgets. Rocket skateboards. <laughs> Look, Black Nerd, I know you mean well, but I just get a feeling this is all gonna backfire. Yeah, this all seems a little, uh... Hey guys, what do you say we talk about our dicks and make fart jokes all day? Be bop! Misguided. Where are you getting the money to do this anyway? Oh, from him. Hi, guys. Oh, oh. oh, you can't trust him. Oh, come on. He's not making the film. He's just financing it. Yeah, you won't even notice I'm here. Oh, gosh, that's such a pretty movie. You mind if I touch it? Sure, put your fingerprints all over it. No! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows, the follow-up to the Michael Bay-produced hit from 2014. Everyone got excited for this movie because it was finally giving everything that the fans always wanted. I mean everything. Bebop and Rocksteady, Baxter Stockman, the Technodrome, the Turtle Van, and most notably, Krang, one of the biggest villains. How did everyone react to it? I... It sucked. A little bit. Hmm. Some things are amazing and a ton of fun to watch, but other things are... It sucked. Yeah, we got it. So what did this movie get right, and what did this movie get wrong? Well, strap on your giant mechanical nunchuck arms. That's cool. We'll get to it. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. Not to be confused with a video game of the same name. There's a video game of the same name? There is. Is that like... Turtles 3, Turtles in Time, but was it called Turtles in Time? No, but it wasn't the Super time. Nintendo was. was, was it good though? It, 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 it had parties of crime seeing the turtle. What a coincidence that they called out like of the shadow. There's no connection. It has no connection. That's a thumb on me! It opens with New York looking unhealthily green. They've been infected by a nuclear shamrock shake? As the turtles are seen jumping off the Chrysler building to. pick up a pizza. Seems like a detour. Thanks, Kevin. See you next week! When we'll find out more ways to destroy your creation! The movie then literally spells out their names. Yeah, thanks. We would have forgotten if you didn't remind us. We're not watching Game of Thrones. We can remember who these four are. But they were also nice enough to list their marketable character stereotype. They go to a Knicks game, because if you like Ninja Turtles, you obviously also like basketball, where it's revealed that Vern, played again by Will Arnett, is given credit for defeating the Shredder. How the hell is anyone supposed to believe that? But when danger struck the heart of our city, he single-handedly battled Shredder, locking him up behind bars. Hey guys, just thought I'd let you know that I just single-handedly defeated Godzilla. So if you'll excuse me, I'll be off to get the key to the city. Aw, good for you, Malcolm. 
Yeah, I'll just blindly believe that. Wait, how did you defeat him? You can't ask something like that! That's totally uncalled for. I'm sorry, Malcolm, he doesn't get it. Yeah, take care of your friend. What the hell's wrong with you? We all know who the real monster is. The turtles then shoot spitballs at him, because it's clearly more important than stopping crime, and they seem to get a direct hit. I think they're all having simultaneous strokes. They get a call from April, played again by Megan Fox, who's following a scientist named Baxter Stockman, played by Tyler Perry, who she thinks is working for the Shredder. Either that or Medea is undercover as Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson? Really? Yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson. You're sure that Tyler Perry as Baxter Stockman doesn't look like anyone else you can think of? Nope. Fine! Tyler Perry as Baxter Stockman kinda looks like me. Really? I was just gonna say he looks like the original comic. But now that you mention it, yeah, it does look exactly like him! <laughs> <laughs> There's a big difference. I'm a nerd, not a geek. It's the difference between like TED Talks and Comic Con. Comic Con, yeah. <laughs> she starts downloading information off of his iPad, but gets taken away before she can get all of it. It has truly been an honor to meet you, and you are really one of the greatest minds of our generation. Huh, that's how most women get out of a conversation with Michael Bay. Speaking of which, insert our gratuitous sexy shot as April finds an emergency schoolgirl uniform stand to disguise herself. Maybelline, for your random spotlight appearing pantyhose vanishing kleptomaniac tendencies. That'll be 94.25, bitch. Hey everybody, I got a cowboy! Wow. I didn't know such a lame excuse could get somebody into skimpy clothing. Oh, Tamara! Black Nerd is holding some information for us, and the only way he'll spill it is if somebody dresses up in a Harley Quinn uniform. Accommodate us! No. But Michael Bay said you would. No. First season Harley Quinn? Okay, I'm not Megan Fox. You can't just easily replace me if I don't do what you want. No? Of course not. Now, which of these baseball bats looks better? <laughs> <laughs> That's our Tamara. We then see the Shredder being hauled to jail, and wait a minute. Who's this guy? I know we didn't really see the Shredder's face in the first film, but even from that shadowy outline, we know this isn't the same guy. Even his reveal is nothing. Last time it was a big mystery what he looked like, and now it's just, oh hey, I'm Shredder, no biggie. He's unmasked the majority of the film. That would be like if Michael Myers was walking around without a mask. Yeah, it's like seeing this Chris O'Donnell look-alike as Casey Jones. Hey Jones, they're all yours. Casey Jones is a pissed off vigilante. He hates the justice system because he thinks it's broken, resulting in a short fused badass who doesn't play by the rules. Think Rambo meets Jason. What's this guy's story? That's Officer Jones, and I'm gonna be a detective someday. Close, just take the exact opposite of everything he was and that's him. Look, the guy playing him, Stephen Amell, is a good actor. He's proven that time and time again, but in this movie, they're just not giving us who Casey Jones is. What up, Big Daddy Lawbreaker? Ready to forget how awesome I was in Arrow? You got 32 counts of first-degree murder! Hot damn! Take it from someone who has his own problems with anger management issues? Ooh, that must mean he's a badass. He has anger management issues. I myself am a hockey guy. My bone crushing on ice. This movie's overcompensation is like that kid who says, My mommy thinks I'm tough! Here we go! So Baxter Stockman and the Foot Clan ambush the truck to break him out. Actually, why do they even need the Shredder? It looks like they're doing pretty damn good without him. Yeah, I think it's like losing Ted Healy from the Three Stooges. It's not a big loss. Nunchucks Giganticus! <laughs> okay, that was awesome! And they're gone. And the coolest thing only lasts a few seconds. Get used to that. Get used to life. Shredder! If that is your real name... <laughs> 
initiated. But Baxter uses a teleportation device to beam Shredder away, resulting in him somehow meeting up with everybody's favorite alien brain, Krang. <laughs> you and your buddy, Dr. Stockman, found something of mine. The teleportation device. And now it's time to play Why Is This Awesome, but not as awesome as we thought it'd be. Krang looks pretty good even with the modern day updates, but for some reason they give his body this cluttered mechanical head instead of the traditional bald head from the cartoons. I wouldn't mind so much, except in the trailers they clearly did give him the bald head, so why change it? No, no, that's not the reason. The real reason is because Krang barely gets an introduction before he jumps into immediately throwing a ton of plot at us. Like a ton. That device is part of a machine called the Arc Capacitor. It broke apart into three pieces. Collect the other two pieces. I launch the Arc Capacitor to Earth's dimension. It will open a portal through which I can bring the Technodrome. We barely have a chance to take in how awesome it is to see Krang on the big screen because everything in his movie is so quickly rushed. No, that's not the reason either. The big issue is his voice. That's Brad Garrett, who's usually a pretty good choice, but he comes across as really random in this. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I get a little tentacle mucus in your eyes? The inflections, the pitch, the attitude, none of it seems to have any direction. Anyone with a weird distinct voice can do it. I said anyone with a weird distinct voice can do it. I'll be right back. That's a good question. Um, I guess my favorite one is Pacific Rim. Uh, they forgot about the whole drifting thing. They had that one part that was just separate from all the rest. Like, ah, ah, ah. Ow, 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 ow. Go! All right, all right. Wait, what am I doing? I'm trying to show that the voice of Krang is very random and anyone with a distinct voice can do it. So do some distinct voices. Like what? Anything, you're good at this. Come up with any distinct voice you can think of. These back and forth shots are very difficult to edit. How about a little walking? Shredder, shame on you. I see more than just an expensive bubble. I want to give you more power. Ooby do. I want to be like you, who, who, and fuck the cops. Fuck them. But Sam Elliott has different plans. I want to use the Technodrome made by Dodge Ram to steal all the good sarsaparilla. I'm talking about the Krang here. With the help of Doc Blackster Stockman, uh, it's heavy. Using the plutonium gotten from the Libyans, we're going to make this town disappear faster than the Back to the Future animated series. Beautiful. Nicely done. Wait, that's it? You literally dragged me here just for this? Well, I can't really think of anything else to do with your talents. Wait a second. What if we turned him into a mutation of all the nostalgic Saturday morning cartoons? Really? Ooh, like the comedy of the Ninja Turtles. Cowabunga, dudes! And the strength of Lionel. Thundercats! Ho! Oh! The brilliance of Batman! I am the knight. My god, this could be amazing! Go, John Bailey! Create the greatest combination of Saturday morning cartoons ever! Oh my god, I'm so excited! Uh, I can't wait to see what he comes up with. He's a good kid. Yeah. What makes things even stranger is how willing Shredder is just to go along with this weird brain's domination plan. Literally in seconds, he agrees with it. We can bring the people of your planet to their knees. I'm interested. No, no, no. The correct answer is... Who are you? What are you? Where the hell is this? What? What? We then cut to Laura Linney as the police chief because a woman in a pantsuit will balance out a woman in a short skirt. Hey, it worked great for black people in Transformers too. Her only job is to roll her eyes and say, nope, wrong, uh-uh. You proved to be an authority on nothing. Don't take help from someone who's responsible for losing them. And where did you recover this? Leave this manhunt to the professionals. When will people learn that the doubting police chief in movies is always right? She throws Jones off the case because big surprise, they don't believe his story about giant turtles. Thanks for your statement, Jones. That's Officer Jones. Look, I can help you catch these guys. I'm not crazy. I know these streets better than anyone. But it's okay, because he decides to solve the case himself. And you better watch out, because when he goes rogue, he roughs up people's glasses. Hey! 
Ooh, he's really off the rails. In the original film, he's beating the shit out of bad guys. But here, he's throwing CDs. CDs nuts. Are you out of your mind? Get in there. So does this fall more under interrogating or temper tantrums? I love this song. But hey, it was a vanilla ice CD that he threw. So that's a reference. That's a point. I have a GPS. You find him with that. So Shredder finds the two inmates who helped him escape, called Bebop and Rocksteady, and uses them as test subjects for one of Krang's weapons. Now in most incarnations, they mutated by combining people with animals, using the same ooze that made the turtles. Simple, makes a lot of sense. So what's the complicated reasoning here? Inside every human, there's a dormant gene which ties us to our animal ancestors. It's as if that purple ooze has returned them to their rightful place in the animal kingdom. What the hell are you talking about? Animal ancestors? What? What was wrong with just put the ooze on them and combine them with other animals? Does this mean other people have animal ancestors? Like Snoop Dogg was actually a dog? Taylor Lautner was actually a llama? Wallace Shawn was actually a seal? Hey Dennis Hopper, what are you descended from? Tyrannosaurus Rex, the Lizard King. The story behind the rock band is making more sense than you! You're a rhinoceros! And you're a... <laughs> I don't know what you are. <laughs> hey, Timon! Time to make our obligatory cock joke! Oh. Pumbaa, not in front of the kids. My man. Yeah, have fun sending dick pics to the cast of the Jungle Book. Well, it goes along great with their fart jokes. Well, I got a big bang for you. <laughs> oh. Man, that is horrible. How's the cartoon for kids coming across as more adult? April sees what happened and tries to escape, but Casey's there to save her wearing his trademark hockey mask. And this is the only time you'll see him wear it. Did you enjoy it? No? Too bad. Casey's introduced to the turtles and they try to figure out the best way to track Bebop and Rocksteady, but he doesn't want anything to do with it. I was doing just fine. I want to get work done, don't spend time at the zoo. And now I'm gonna find them, just like they say. <laughs> But Donatello makes an amazing, if not totally nonsensical discovery. If Krang's ooze can turn people into animals, perhaps it can turn the turtles into humans. Maybe if they combine it with that Super Nintendo controller on his arm, we can get a really good turtles game. We don't need that kind of change. But Leo says no without consulting the others, which eventually makes its way to Raph and Mikey. You should consult with us before you decide to do something like that. There's only one vote that counts in this family. Mine. Well, at least they keep the most important of turtle traditions. Leo is always the worst leader. Master Splinter will be very upset. Stop this vigilante nonsense. Well, you act like a jerk sometimes. I can't believe you. I mean, come on, what were you thinking? Go ahead. We don't need you. I order you to stay. I'm better than you. Is there an ooze that just transforms you into less of an asshat? Raph and Mikey want to break into police headquarters to get more of the ooh, so they call on Vern to help them sneak in. Guys like you and me were kind of the same. Right. You know, we bring a lot of joy and hope into people's lives. I will erase years of BoJack in one single performance. We some... need to go. Bring that key to the city with you. Michael Bay gets tired of making the military look like idiots, so he turns to making the police look like idiots, as our heroes easily sneak past them with Megan Fox saying Cowabunga, and not the turtles. Cowabunga. Win. Wow, gotta love that incredible look of shock and horror on April's face. Did she find out they're in trouble or try to hold back a fart? In fact, a lot of Megan Fox's performances underplayed. Where in the first film she was at least passable and clearly trying, since most of the movie was about her, here she sounds like a lifeless computer generation than the actual lifeless computer generations. Looking at the data from Baxter's iPad. Uh, excuse me, I named them. We need to find Shredder. That footage has been altered. Baxter is working with the Foot Clan. I want you to be the hero that the whole city thinks you are. April Bot not amused. April Bot only trying when in school girl fetish mode. But the turtles are stopped by the police. Wait, where are the good guys? Get us around! What are those things? They're monsters. They're monsters! Not monsters. Hey, green lives matter. No, don't shoot! Don't shoot! Go don't shoot! Go now! Shoot. Go now! Um, we could still shoot you. Uh, okay, whatever. Have a good day. The turtles are, of course, bummed out at how the people looked at them. You should have seen the looks on their faces. They weren't just scared. There was actual hate. It's like when they released our images online. It will be all right, my son. 
I got something. But enough of that emotional stuff because this movie can't take two seconds without moving somehow. Seems Donnie can track Bebop and Rocksteady's DNA because of course he can. Okay guys, I drew up some sketches. I was thinking my character should have like J.I. Joe tanks for arms and like He-Man swords for fingers. Brilliant John, go, perfect your creation. This gonna be so cool. <sighs> he's adorable when he's happy. I wanna bottle him up. Turtles catch a plane to Brazil, where Bebop and Rocksteady are, only to find they're flying back directly under them. That's quite a coincidence. Where's Raph? And how are we breathing up here? And how can a plane still fly with no tail? I... this tank scene is awesome. Bebop and Rocksteady on the big screen. Yeah. Did you guys enjoy that? Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. Because it's the only time that the turtles fight Bebop and Rocksteady in the entire movie. Lame. Instead, what do we get? More of Leonardo being a dick again. Thanks, guys. Real team effort. What do you know about anything? You're all heart and no brain. We may be brothers, but we are not a team. Worst leader ever! But don't worry, even after Laura Linney sees the turtles with her own eyes, she still doesn't believe Casey or April about there being more mutants like them. The only real monster in the city is Shredder and the two mutants that he's created. Bebop and Rocksteady. If you think anything coming out of your mouth is going to add to her credibility, you are sorely mistaken. What is wrong with her? She saw the damn things. She has no reason not to believe them. He's still over a phone call. I don't know anybody anything. There's even altered security footage with Bebop and Rocksteady that was in there, but now they're erased out. And their advanced police technology doesn't catch on that it's a fake. That footage has been altered. It's been edited. We checked its authenticity. It's clean. Only to be proven wrong later. How the chucking shell do they even check authenticity then? Do they do any actual police work? Guys. Remember how I defeated Godzilla before? Yeah, but how did you... Oh, oh. Well, there's an even bigger monster out there and we need your help to get rid of him. Hmm, I don't know. Police chief, what do you think? They have no idea what they're talking about. It makes me so mad, I want to bulge my eyes out and bubble my head in disgust. Well, she is the police chief. Yeah, she's in that position for a reason. But you can see the monster I defeated before. There's literally no reason not to trust us. I have checked the authenticity of our eyes and they are not clean. Oh, well, she checked the authenticity. Okay, screw you guys, I've got a city to save. You know what, this is ridiculous. None of you have any idea what you're talking about. You're disgraced to law enforcers everywhere. Sheesh, Tamara, I liked you a lot better earlier. Well, thanks, guys. It's okay. I'm here so she can look like that. Krang enters our world through a portal in the sky because that's the only transportation that exists anymore as the turtles try to figure out what's going on. Hacking into the main data core, ship's designate is the Technodrome. Commanding officer goes by the name of Krang. Good God, I know Donatello does machines, but is there anything Donnie's technology doesn't know? You're making Penny Gadget's book computer look like a Samsung Note 7. They decide it's probably best if they blend in, so Leo leaves it up to the rest of his brothers to decide whether or not they should use the ooze to make them human. I'll do whatever you guys say. It's your call. I say fuck this pointless plot thread! What? So we never see them as human? What a missed opportunity! Yeah, and for the guy who claims Leonardo makes all the decisions, he sure did make a decision to smash the ooze without asking the rest of his brothers. Talk about a pointless waste of an awesome idea! I've done it. I've created the most incredible character to turn into. Super Thunder Morphin Bat Ninja Hijo. The coolest mutation you've ever seen in your lives. My body is ready. Transform me! Now that we thought about it, it's just not worth it. 
What? If this movie taught us anything, it's don't give the audience exactly what they want, just tease them with it! But he had bullets for nipples and fire for nose hairs! But don't you feel like you've learned a valuable lesson? No! Well, that's your loss, not mine. Bye! After Baxter sets up the portal, big surprise! Shredder betrays him. I'll be a god. You'll be just what you've always been. A parasite? An insect? A half-human, half-bug hybrid? A footnote. Boo! Oh! Mm. You suck. It was right there! Couldn't they just CG in a fly landing on him to give us hope? But everyone's betraying everyone as Shredder, dressed like a ninja Eiffel Tower, is frozen like a bitch and stored with the other Smash Brothers trophies. Back in the toy chest with the rest of the things I've broken. That was our big villain. Does Shredder ever not go out like an asshole? But I want a conquer Earth. I guess not. So April, Vern, and Casey try to sneak in to send the Technodrome back to its dimension. Hey fellas! Remember me? Actually, we don't. Yeah, your performance was pretty forgettable. What? Why me? Uh, I have tits. Oh, if only I had my intimidating hockey mask. Yeah, then you know I'm a guy with anger management issues. But Casey locks them in a crate and potentially murders them. Rock. <coughs> yeah, peeps. My man. Wasted line. Yup. My man. Now let's all look at our dicks. The turtles approach Krang and try to defeat him. I'll only warn you once. Get off my ship. Donnie, you heard him. Get off his ship. Come on. Vern, take her on. I have tits. So does she. And uh, it's different. Daddy! The electromagnetic force of the portal is coming from there. Let's go! Yay! Science babble! So we never do see the fully put together Technodrome. Techno blows! But April is still there to report on it. Oh yeah, she's a reporter. Forgot. What was that threat from the sky and how exactly was it averted? But the bigger question is, does it even matter? And will I ever act like I give a shit in another movie again? The turtles are rewarded by New York's dumbest and apologize for being such loudmouthed idiots. All rewarded except for Splinter, who is just in the corner watching. Awkward. Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello, Michelangelo. Last name. Oh, uh, not so much. It's Splinter! I raised them! But don't pay any attention to me, I'm just the reason they exist! I think we'll stick with the arrangement we've had. But it looks like the turtles are happy staying a secret in New York, so it's more of a peeking out of the shadows? You could live a normal life. What fun is that? Yay, we're out of the shadows, but not really. But we're being spotlighted where a lot of people can see us. I'm so confused. So that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. How was it? Kawaii! Some things are really cool. Many of the action scenes are creative and energized, but the plot never takes a break from throwing shit at you. It's amazing seeing Krang, Bebop, and Rocksteady, but it would have been even more amazing if they were in a movie that had more weight to it. It really is like one long version of the cartoon, which sounds perfect, in theory. I love that we get more references and fan service, but even for Ninja Turtles, we still want a movie that makes sense. Even though the original film didn't have everything, they treated it like it was a film. They took time to set things up and establish atmosphere. This movie just kind of goes from one crazy thing to another crazy thing without any of it ever adding up. So I guess if you want to see one long live action version of the Turtle cartoon right down to the hokey writing and rushed subplots, this is the Turtle movie you've been waiting for. But if you're looking for a movie that captures everything awesome about the Turtles, this gets it right sometimes, but feels like a mess all the other times. And speaking of which, what was that giant monster Malcolm and Tamara were talking about before anyway? There's nothing to see out there! There are your- do not trust your- ah! My god. Michael Bay's crappy influence has gotten so large, he's become gigantic! 
That's nothing. You know how Krang's mind was in his stomach? Well, take a look where mine is. Hey, guys. <laughs> Man, I have fused into one. I love of destroying things has finally resulted in the destruction of your species. Oh, if only we could fight a horrible idea with an equally horrible idea. Hello. Malcolm? Yeah, it turns out my animal ancestor was a giant platypus bunny. I just played around with that dormant gene and here I am. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna go breathe fire on these guys because that's what platypus bunnies can do. Feet away! Well, there's only one thing to say after a crazy adventure like that. I know exactly what you mean! Cow! This was really weird. Yeah. I, I don't feel we earned no. that. Yeah, yeah. No, not we'll play really. Turtles 3 NES instead? Yeah, that sounds oh, good. Yeah. I've been playing in a while. Right? It's been a good It's long the most time. overlooked yeah. Turtles game. You know? Don't forget Super Thunder Morph and Bet. Dang it! Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out. This week we are doing Prevent Blindness. Founded in 1908, Prevent Blindness has become the nation's leading volunteer eye health and safety organization dedicated to fighting blindness and saving sight. Focused on promoting a continuum of vision care, Prevent Blindness touches the lives of millions of people each year. They get the word out on better eye health and support groundbreaking research. Every grant they get promotes the core mission of preserving sight. Through their focus initiative, they support the collection and publication of prevalence and economic data to help healthcare providers make better decisions about eye and vision health. They also advocate for public policies that improve health systems nationwide and provide better access to eye healthcare. So definitely check out their website or their YouTube channel and see how you can help so many people keep the gift of sight. <laughs>